In this video, I'll talk a bit about the history and future of electron microscopy. The electron microscope was invented by a Hungarian physicist, Liad Szolard, but it was a German physician, Ernst Rusker, and electrical engineer, Max Knoll, who built the first transmission electron microscope in 1931. Soon afterwards, in 1935, German engineer Manfred von Arden built the first scanning electron microscope. Then, 1938, Manfred helped construct the famous Siemens TEM, a microscope regarded as the first practical electron microscope. 1945, electron microscopes had achieved the milestone of one nanometer resolution. In 1963, the world's first commercial available scanning electron microscope came out of Cambridge. And around 1982, charge-coupled devices were first installed into electron microscopes. Up until this point, electron microscopes were all saved to film, but using CCTV cameras, images could be saved directly to hard drive. Early 1990s, focused ion beams were introduced. In 1993, lens coupled cameras were introduced. By the year 2000, technical advances made it possible to collect up to one gigabyte of images of data per week. Uh, since then, however, further technical advances, including the re reintroduction of serial block phase scanning electron tomography by Winfred Denk in 2004, have made it possible to acquire data much, much faster. In fact, let's look what's happened since 1982 to the rate of data acquisition. This blue trend line approximates the amount of data new instruments can obtain when an operator spends a full week on the microscope collecting images. By contrast, this green line shows the approximate speed a single human can manually segment these images of cells, if told to trace every visible compartment on every slice. If our user is a segmentation expert, they can use techniques like interpolation and semi-automatic drawing tools to increase their productivity by a factor of 10. But the point here is that manual segmentation can never keep pace with data acquisition. Taking a closer look at this curve, from one gigabyte in 2000, Microscopes such as this one, using the three-view serial block face system, can collect up to 140 gigabytes per week in the year 2009. A mere two years later, it became possible to acquire over two terabytes worth of data in a week. In fact, the benefit of three-view is it doesn't even require the person to be present during that time. Now, at this stage, you already need on the order of one to 10,000 users just to keep up with tracing data from this single microscope. And the trend doesn't stop. Companies continue to develop new ways to collect data faster. In fact, in our own lab, James Bauer developed an 8K coupled camera in 2009 capable of 5 terabytes per week of montage image. And several other technology development projects, sworn to secrecy, of course, promise even faster rates. Let's compare this trend against Moore's law, whereby the average size of new hard drives, shown in red, doubles every 1.5 years, as seen best in our bottom graph where a log scale has been used. Data acquisition from EM has been like Moore's law on steroids. But the reason we're showing this is not to impress you. Instead, we want you to really think about uh, the growing divide between data acquisition and how fast we can actually segment it. The challenge now is not who can acquire data the fastest. The challenge now is who can analyze data the fastest. Already there are individual labs with petabytes of unanalyzed data, and this, for us, is the real motivation behind our SLASH initiative, an initiative which helps scientists get value out of these massive data sets by way of methodology, such as pairing high-fidelity segmentation with other techniques like stereology, and by way of hybrid methods which combine the speed and scalability of automatic segmentation with the accuracy of manual segmentation. Only by using such methodologies can we hope to achieve something meaningful from the massive quantities of data we already have and will continue to pile up as this exponential trend of data acquisition continues over the next few years. For more information, please visit slash segmentation.com and watch some of our other videos.